Hello, welcome to Mining Now. I'm your host, Jared Downey. With me is Gaudi Molina. Hello, Gaudi. Hello, and good morning. Good morning. We're, we've got a busy day today. We've got our yeah. first show is Mining Now, then we've got to do Crownsman Energy this afternoon. That's right. This show today has three guests on it, so that'll keep <laughs> Just, you busy. Yeah. Um, we did that panel for the Christmas panel, and that worked out well. So yeah, we can actually, do it. you know, I think I'm, I'm very confident on this one. Yeah, it's going to be good. We've got <laughs> O-Pit Blast. Um, we are going to they're obviously working in the, the blasting sector of mining. Mm -hmm. So they've got some pretty amazing technology. I would, I would say um, it's not an exaggeration to say they'll be leading the way in innovation um, in blasting sensing coming up. So we're, we've got three different people from their organization coming on to just talk about different aspects. It's going to be very interesting. First, Gaudi, though, let's talk um, who our sponsors are. Alrighty. So first up, we've got Fenner Dunlop. Hardworking people need hardworking conveyor belts to get the job done. Fenner Dunlop not only manufactures the toughest and longest lasting conveyor belts in the world, but manufactures all of their conveyor belting products in their own North American facilities. This ensures the integrity of Fenner Dunlop conveyor belting and allows them to monitor each step of the production process. Fenner Dunlop conveyor belts are engineered to withstand the hard, uh, harshest conditions and heaviest loads from the bulk coal, heavy metal, and precious metal mining industries. With over 150 years under their belt, their globally recognized expert sales, services, and technical teams are available to ensure your belts last a lifetime. For more information, visit FennerDunlopAmericas.com or call 1-800-661-2358. Um, we also have Savannah Equipment. Savannah Equipment supplies new and used mining mm. equipment around the world, from placer to underground to ore processing plants. They have gold concentrating tables, trommels, and mineral jigs in stock now to take advantage of the high gold prices. You can visit them at SavannahEquipment.com, where you will find more equipment every day. And of course, we can't forget Power Zone Equipment. When you need a specialized team of world-class engineers for your oil and gas pipelines, dewatering, or any fluid handling needs, you want to visit PowerZone.com. In addition to their inventory of rebuilt pumps, motors, engines, they also have an amazing team to design and engineer your systems, no matter the challenge, no matter the location. Get in the zone with Power Zone. Visit them at PowerZone.com. And last but not least, please go ahead and register to CIM 2021 Convention and Expo. It's coming to you this May 3rd to 6th. Um, this will be an event, uh, sorry, a virtual event. Um, therefore, it's never been easier to attend. Get insight from industry leaders like Anglo-Americans Mark Kutafani, Caterpillar's Denise Johnson, Torx Gold's Jody Kuzenko, and many more. Explore mining operations through virtual site tours, find the solutions and the expertise you need with technical talks, Q&A sessions, and of course, the CIM Expo, Canada's mining marketplace. Again, that is May 3rd to 6th, and you can register today by visiting cim.org. Thank you, Gaddy. I, I, uh, I want to make a mention as well. To, if you have, to get an idea of what a class act the CIM group is, um, we've been working with Mining for Miracles. Uh, this year, they are um, raising funds to to help kids with heart, uh, well, heart rhythm disorders. And CIM, now in all of this chaos that, that 2020 brought us, now they're trying to pull off in 2021, um, they gave Mining for Miracles a booth um, for free to help. Um, oh, so awesome. yeah, so check out miningformiracles.com and uh, big shout out to the folks at CIM. That's a real class act. Okay. Okay. We're going to get the um, Gowdy. I don't want to, I don't want to butcher names anymore. So who are our guests today? <laughs> oh, you're passing it, <laughs> on, passing to it me. on to me. And then I will do my best to get it right during the show. Okay. So we've got uh, Francisco Leite. Um, we also got Vinicius uh, Miranda, Evan uh, Tibod. I believe Tebow. Tebow. Yeah, See, that that one I I, I, I one of my best remember. friends growing up. His last name was Tebow. So oh, I, there I, you I, go. Yeah. So that's why you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, they're from Opit Blast. Gowdy, let's kick off the interview. We'll bring them on now. Fabulous. Hello, gentlemen. Welcome to the show. Uh, we're going to be covering a lot today. So so thank you for joining us. It'll be fun. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, let's go through, just, just to set up, um, so we know who is who on the show. Um, Francisco, let's start with you, and then Vinicius, and then Evan. Uh, what are your positions with the company? What are your roles? 
All right, Gerald. Uh, first of all, thank you for the, the invitation from, from you and Gaudi. Um, yeah, I'm Francisco. I'm the, the co-founder together with, with Vinicius, my associate. I'm now uh, with the role of CEO and I lead a team, the, the, our marketing team and our commercial team inside the company. Okay. Vinicius, what, uh, what, and your, what is your role with the company? Uh, as Francisco said, I'm Vinicius. I'm co-founder of Opit Blast. And I'm CEO, but uh, my big responsibility inside the company is the development. I'm, I'm responsible for the development of our products and softwares. Oh, and so you're hands-on with the development then? Yeah, yeah. I'm coordinating the team and uh, I'm, sh I'm chief scientist and I'm responsible for the new products, new algorithms and this kind of stuff. Well, we're going to be covering uh, we're going to be covering some of those new products today. Um, Evan, I know uh, Opit Blast is selling now all over the world. Um, what areas are you covering for them? I'm the North American distributor. So, so as far up as the top of Alaska, all the way east, Labrador, and down to Miami, I'll, I can cover it. Nice. Okay. Okay. Thank you both. Um, Okay, let's start with, uh, Benicius, can we start with you? Um, you know, what do you sort of, when you, the company is so interesting and it's been innovative and it's, it's one of those things they've got, a pro, you've got products in the market, but you're still expanding more. So I kind of wanted to have you tell the audience what you want them to understand about the company before we dig into the products. The, thank you for the question. The, the idea behind our company, our idea is deliver for our customers an amazing products, new products, in order to optimize um, the blast process. But not only that, our idea is deliver for our customers much more than products, than softwares or hardware. The idea is deliver that uh, a, a very special, very customized service. The idea is we are here working seven days per week, 24 hours per day to deliver for our customers uh, a, a great experience. Then our idea is not only focus on the product, of course, we have amazing product, but uh, it's focus on the, on the service that we can deliver for our customers. And uh, I believe that uh, this is our direction and it's, it's working very fine. When you came into the industry, and again, we'll get into the products, but uh, your, your technology does fall into that disruptive category. Um, you know, when you started the company uh, as, as a co-founder, was that your goal is to sort of breathe fresh air into the industry to, to be innovative? Uh, was that the starting goal? And uh, this is, this was a plan. Uh, Francisco and me, uh, we, we are mining engineers and we, we, we had this problem. We always was trying to um, optimize our buses process, but um, over the fields uh, was not so easy to, to find a product that delivered all features that was necessary in order to make a, a great design. Um, then we decided, okay, we must create uh, a software, but uh, the idea is uh, it's a software made by mining engineers for mining engineers. Mm. Then we understand the needs of our, our customers because we are the profile of our customers. Then the idea was um, create new tools, <laughs> new features, but totally different. And we have um, in our product is um, gamification process. Okay, we create our software like uh, the people create and um, games. Then this is the idea to make a very easy software, very friendly in order to deliver for the, for the, for the customer, not only a tool, but experience, a different experience, a new experience. Then this, this was the initial idea and we, we keep in this, in this idea. And for this reason, we are going and each time more, we have uh, more and more customers in, in a lot of counters. And this is the, this is the, 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 
the center center line of our company is um, create create softwares, but not not only software, not only on hardware, but create experience. Uh, it is mo much more easy to use Opit Blast than another kind of systems because it's easy, is is easy, is friendly, and this is the the idea. Then we started it in 2016, and now five years, uh, we are bigger. Then, then we 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 keep doing doing that. We focus on our customer and, and the experience that we can deliver them. This is the the idea. Did you how you started in 2016? Um, had you worked together previously, um, and did this sort of did you sort of develop the idea before you started, like building up a few years before, or was it sort of hey, we, these got this problem. We know we can figure out a way to solve these issues. Um, and make it easier for people, let's start it. Was it a quick decision or did you build, build up over time? Uh, it's very interesting <laughs> history that we, we worked together before in a previous company and Francisco was my internal. Then we started to, to work together. He, he, in some projects, was working for me. But I, I identified in, in Francisco uh, much more than a mining engineer. I see, I saw that that guy was a very, very great engineer. And always that's possible. We was together. Uh, we were together working in some projects, specific projects for the blast, blast industry. Okay, we come from the civil explosives industry. Mm. And many times, uh, together, uh, always uh, talking about uh, the possibilities to create some some new business. Okay, I, I always had inside me this this warming saying to me, "You must create your business." Mm -hmm. And because in my previous company it was not allowed for me to to create all the things that I was imagining. Okay, do you know that when we work for another company, it's not so possible many times to use all your creativity to create new products, new solutions. Then for this reason, we say, okay, it's a moment to create a new business, a new company just for us. And Francisco, he's a small crazy guy. And he said, yes, let's, let's do it together. And we was here in Oporto City in Portugal, drink uh, wine together. And after two bottles of wine, we decided <laughs> let's let's let let's start a new company for CCS. I called my boss and said, "Okay, I I, I will not <laughs> keep working for you. Uh, I will leave the company in a couple of months." And after a few weeks, Francisco did the same, and we started. It was not easy at the beginning. It was not easy. Just two guys, one big idea. Yeah. But a lot, a lot of concentration, a lot of work, hard work, and now I think that was the best, uh, the best opportunity, the best um, decision of my life, of my it's, professional uh, my life. You know, and I'm, I, I'm glad that you, you have a, a good partner because um, I was in a, I was in like this business leadership meeting one time and, and one of the guys leader the meeting, it was kind of the beginning of the end of me not being involved in that group anymore. <laughs> they said, um, they said, never start a business with a partner. Um, and Crownsman is a partnership. Um, and, and, you know, it's when you find the right person, I, they just, I think they'd had a bad experience. So when you have someone that can offer and fill those gaps, um, it can just make an amazing product. And I think you've done that. Francisco, um, I want to jump over to you because, you know, I want to unpack the products, you know, don't want to leave the audience hanging for too long. Let's jump right into it. What are you selling to, it's already on the market. So what are you delivering to your customers? Right, Gerard. Uh, thank you. Uh, so, um, well, and thank you also to, to Vinicius for the, those kind of words. I'm not the, yeah. the only. I'm not only the, the, the crazy guy. Vinicius is also a, a crazy guy, and uh, I'm really proud to, to be next to him and build this uh, building this amazing uh, company. Uh, this, this is what makes me wake up every day. So, yeah, let's uh, let's talk a little bit about our our products. Um, so, um, basically, we have a package. All right. 
and our package is composed by uh, by four four products all right so the first one what we call the op plus is a windows based uh, uh, platform uh, is where you can plan your op operation all right is where you import uh, the terrain data your your operation data and then where you start planning that uh, that, uh, that that process so you can import topography you can edit topography you can place and uh, control the geometry of your boreholes where you're going to place explosives so basically you can <coughs> adjust the geometry of the boreholes the shape of the boreholes also all the characteristics of the boreholes that will be uh, drilled into the ground then uh, of course a uh, really important part of our of our system is the charging planning so we work with bulk explosives and uh, cartridge explosives. So basically, you can uh, simulate all kinds of charge um, charge um, uh, application. Um, apart from that, we have the timing. So of course, after charging borehole, you need to tie up. You need to plan the sequence of of the blast. And we work with non-electric and electronic detonators. Um, this is a critical uh, part of the software because is based on on this on the time sequence is where you uh, you be able to predict uh, the vibration which we also have an integration with google maps and uh, you can you can check right away after the planning you can check the vibration values around your operation let's say for example you are doing an operation uh, in the city or in a, in a quarry near the city you can uh, you can predict exactly what's going to be a certain vibration in a certain point around of the operation, and you can take actions before uh, before the blast. So this is a very a very powerful tool for for our for our customers. The, Francisco, I the uh, something I've learned on the show is um, when when something is innovative, sometimes it it ends up being so obvious that you would need it in the industry that it's it's almost like oh well that must have always been there so i've learned to ask people what were what was happening before you came on the scene so what is the standard way what is the gap that you're filling before you uh, came to market you know uh general like Vinicius was saying we were we came from the industry uh i i can say i've worked in the in multiple countries i've worked in in morocco mauritania portugal spain brazil uh, so a, a lot of countries that I've worked in, and uh, uh, the, the our our area or inside inside of the mining industry, our area, the blasting industry, um, uh, suffered a, a, a extreme uh, push up in the last years. Mm. You know, I, I it was it was not uh, so far so far away uh, so many years ago that I, I was seeing people measuring distance uh, between boreholes with tape measures. Mm -hmm. And this, this is, uh, uh, you know, we are in the in, in this century. We we need to to be precise. We need to be accurate, and uh, we cannot trust in 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 people uh, in, in some people actions because we are we are humans. We we we, we commit mistakes, so we need to be accurate. And Opit Blast bring that to the industry. We we were in 2016. Uh, no one was talking about an app that uh, you can bring, which was the product I was going to talk after. No one, no one was talking about an app that you can take with you to the field and record real information on, on the ground. For example, you know, the, the, the people were in the field with a, a, a paper collecting the kilos that they were putting the, in the borehole. Then th there was rain, there was mud, that uh, paper, you know, was destroyed and uh, no one knew what, uh, no one knew what was happening in the field. So. We created an app, and we and we are also proud to say that we were one of the first first companies uh, delivering to the market an, an app that you can take with you the plan and register hole by hole the characteristics of it, how many kilos you are putting into that hole, the the stemming height, the the depth of that hole, and that gave an insight that uh, that uh, what was happening in the field. Um, and that's if you allow me, I, I can jump to our third uh, to our third product, which is Opit Blast Analytics. Opit just, Blast oh, Analytics. I just yep. want I want to just because I'm I'm always mindful of this, and because I want to go to Opit Dev um, or the analytics, I want to cover that. 
But I want to make a clarification because we have so many people watching our show, and I, I've got it in my notes to mention later, but I want to mention it now. The, so, the size of company range, because it's easy for someone to watch a show like this and go, oh, this is for some major, these are for the major operators. Your this The way that you price it and the way that the business model, when you're talking about all these things, this is for a company, even small operators, right? Of course, we, we operate uh, quarries with... Uh, four or five guys operating mm. until the companies with hundreds of employees. Uh, we have uh, small quarries in Morocco and for example, we operate in the biggest coal mine in, in, in Africa. So we, our range of users, uh, they, they vary, uh, they vary a lot. So any, any, um, company or any operation that deals with explosives are our leads. Okay. I just wanted to clarify because I think it's really important because it's easy when you start start talking about high-end technology, then it, it's easy for the, the small operators to go, okay, well, I'm not going to be able to afford that. So I wanted to touch on that. Okay. Let's jump into the, I think you were going to talk about the analytics before I interrupt you. My apologies. Um, no, no problem. But, but the analytics, OPIT dev, I want to talk, I want to, if you could unpack those for us, please. Of course. Um, so basically, like, like I was saying, we have the first product, which is OPIT Last, which is a planning software. Then we have the, the field app, which is an app that you control the real information. And what uh, OP Blast Analytics does, it combines these two, these two uh, information. So you can say, okay, uh, I plan mm, to, to, to put uh, 200 kgs in a hole, and now I have 300 kgs in a hole. What, what happened here? Because you know we deal with nature. Uh, our job, our daily routine is deal with nature. And we cannot predict everything. Uh, so do different things uh, or different things that, that, that in, in the plan is normal. But what is not normal is not to track them. So mm. every, every time we do uh, something different from the plan, we need to, we need to track, we need to, to, to resist because that thing is what will prevent and what will make us predict uh, safety issues and understand what, uh, what uh, or understand the future of, of, of the operation. So the analytics allows us to control uh, KPIs and, uh, and track them all, uh, all along the time and uh, understand where, where, which errors we are committing, from where the, these errors came from, and more important, who, came, who, who made these mistakes. And, and the objective is to bring back the power of the, of the operation to the mining engineer. Because the mining engineer now, with our products, they have eyes on the ground, even if they are not there. And that, uh, I believe this is the, the main conclusion that, that we can take from our product is bring the power to mining engineers and to the mine planners. Um, I, and then talking a little, a little bit about our OPIT Dev is a, is a product that we released um, uh, last year, uh, a really innovative product. Uh, this is a this is a probe um, that is used to to and the, we deployed inside a, a borehole and we model the the shape of the that borehole. Uh, we we measure the real inclination of, of this borehole, and uh, we developed this product and uh, this product has a really interesting business model um, because we wanted to reach out to small operate operations uh, because the small operations are the ones that. Uh, have more uh, um, place to improvements, and mm. is where these kind of products for optimization they really play an important uh, important uh, role. Um, and the, the outcome yeah. from this kind of product is uh, the, the the model of, of the borehole, like I was saying. And with that information, we can prevent multiple multiple uh, issues. We can um, improve our fragmentation if we if we control. Uh, our boreholes, we control our drilling, mm -hmm. we can uh, control the outcome of a shot. Um, and more important than that is, um, is the, the free phase analysis. Uh, if we can predict or we can measure that, that the borehole is really close to a free phase, we can uh, avoid uh, fly rocks, for example, which, which is causing a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, safety issues uh, mm -hmm. lately. Especially in small oper and where there's small operators, right? Of course. What? Uh, so this is actual an actual physical thing. I think we'll have some videos sort of showcasing it. Um, and and this is going to be I 
I realize I'm talking to engineers, so you'll have to forgive the uh, very non-engineer questions. But in a, in a, if, let's say you have 20 drill holes for the blast or more. Um, are you do you have do you put this down? Do you put the O pit dev down into each borehole at, to get the analytics? Is that how it works, or do you have like three or four of them on site so that it's quicker? Like how how would you standard? How would you recommend people go about sort of initializing it? Um, no, that's an interesting question. And we have the, the two things. We have uh, uh, operations where they have one single uh, OP dev to measure hole by hole, but we also have operations that uh, that they, they are they are larger and they have multiple borehole, multiple OP devs measuring boreholes. For you to have an idea, uh, and for the for the, the audience have an idea, uh, 20 meter borehole can be measured in in one minute or less than one minute. So uh, uh, this this brings uh, um, uh, something that uh, that was not happening. So the guys were drilling the holes, and uh, nobody knew what happened. What's happening in the bottom of the borehole? So right. We with this, they can know exactly where the hole is going, the real inclination of the of, the, of that hole, and uh, understand if that hole is drilled correctly. Hmm. A question that comes to my mind as well is um, is if you're going to a small operator, let's say it's a you know. Mm, small but there's you know maybe 50 a 50 uh, camp sort of operation um are you if if they're bringing in your your software and your products then are you also are you also doing any sort of consulting with them do you call consult just based on your product um or being engineers are you able to are you able to provide sort of that extra service to sort of optimize their operations definitely we, uh, in fact, we have one uh, one part of the company is dedicated to engineering projects, mm. and uh, uh, that that team is a team uh, with highly uh, technical engineers uh, that we, we strategically moved into into our our company, and uh, they have worldwide experience from uh, underground blasting, surface blasting, underwater blasting, and we provide a service in in that sense. Uh, our guys can be in 24 hours in any any place in the world and provide assistance for uh, 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 an issue of, of a certain customer or, or a certain client. So we, we we cover pretty much all the all the the basics in, in terms of blast uh, blast planning. It's it's actually quite amazing because it's it's easy to become to just develop into a company that's sort of off the shelf, but you're actually interacting with the customers. And um, and I want to talk, and I think that's a nice spot to pivot into the actual bu- business model because it's sort of interesting what you've developed. Um, can you touch on that, Francisco? Of course, like, like, like what Vinicius was saying in the beginning was really important. Uh, the way we build the company was listening to the customers. Mm. Uh, everything we, we build we listen, we ask questions, and uh, they are the ones that uh, lead our our way. Uh, we don't want to build something that is not useful. We want to, to build to build something that, uh, or sorry, useless. We want to be something that is u- useful for, for the customers. So um, that was one way to, to, to start building our products. Uh, and uh, of course, the, 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 other, the other, uh, other path that we, we follow was to um, uh, develops partnership with certain institutions. Uh, for example, I can name some. We are uh, part of the International Society of Explosive Engineers, and we're, we're really proud of that. We are part of Frag Blast. We are part of the uh, Inter- European Federation of Explosive uh, Engineers, uh, AP3, AP3E, which is a Portuguese uh, association for the explosives studies. Uh, we participate in some uh, conferences, for example, PDAC there in... in, in um, in Canada, but uh, uh, something that also uh, uh, helped to to uh, to develop our business model was the integration with uh, with uh, certain companies. For example, companies that develop um, uh, electronic uh, systems, electronic detonator systems. Uh, Vinicius and his team they are masters on the integration with this kind of, of devices. So um, we were uh, delivering. Well, we are delivering a tool that in, that uh, integrates with this kind of of, uh, of this kind of device and it brings a lot of value to our to our customers. The uh, actually, I saw. I think I think it might have been on Facebook. I saw a post uh, Thomas Palangio. So not 
Tom Planjo Jr., uh, senior, but I guess junior. Um, he posted something, uh, you've some, some sort of collaboration with whipware. Uh, is that right? That's right. We are, we are a big friend from Thomas and Tom. Uh, Thomas and they Tom. are, yeah, they are, they are uh, extremely valuable partner to, to us. And uh, we, we, we met them uh, in uh, 2016. Uh, and uh, we are, uh, we are really happy to, to be with them. And uh, you, you, talk, you touched the, the point. We are now developing an integration with uh, with our system with theirs. Business is leading a team uh, that is developing an integration with their uh, vibration prediction um, or vibration measuring model with with our with our system. And um, we have also some products in the in the future that uh, that are being uh, are being developed. That are being already we put already in the paper to, to be developed in partnership with with, with Wear. Mm -hmm. And uh, that definitely. Uh, was a plus on our on our uh, on our path. That's that's exciting. I, uh, Tom Tom so yeah Tom Senior I, I suppose would be uh, he was one of our first guests ever on the show. He actually sort of led the way for people saying like this is actually a safe place to come on and talk about your products. Um, and then he came back on again. I think it's just two two times I think. Um, so yeah, they've big, been big supporters of the show Whipware. So it's yeah. neat to see you working with them. Um, I want to talk a little bit. Um, I want to jump a little bit because I want to talk about the U.S. and Canadian market. Um, Evan, I believe that is your area. Um, can you talk a little bit about the response you've had? Sort of that interaction. Um, you know this these products are made for harsh conditions, um, which is always going to be a question as soon as you get into Canadian winters and those types of things. Um, what has it been like for you trying to push this product out into the U S and Canadian market? Well, <clears throat> thank you. Um, I would say it's quite an interesting thing when you take a new technology and you bring it to, to a location. Um, you know, you're always going to get pushback and, you really succeed when you start to, you know, ask the customers, you know, what their problems are. And this is why I like OPIT and the guys here at OPIT, this team is just awesome. Like I'm so happy to be working with them on a friendship level as well as a uh, professional because they really, they don't go in there and try to say, uh, this is going to solve all your problems. They say, what are your problems and how can we really help this? Um, and they take, they take this, their technology and they find what you need. <clears throat> they find what you need and, uh, and, and help walk them through the steps to fix the problems. If that makes sense. Um, when it comes to extreme weather, I mean, Francisco can go into how the customers in, in Norway are using this in very cold temperatures. And I've worked uh, in Labrador on the Iron Belt and someone will say, oh, that's not going to work here. You know, and then the guy, you know, a new someone's trying to bring in new technology. And then you see what happens in minus 40 degrees where you're up in the northern part of Alaska and you see that they can't even get product in all year long, all year long. So you really have to be flexible and being a small team like OPIT, they, they, they can create different technologies to fit the customer's needs. And that's, that's really crucial, I think. What kind of, I mean, it must be a huge advantage to you. Um, you know, I, I've been involved with taking products to market. And obviously through this show, you see a lot of um, products and companies, they're trying to expand their services and their offerings. Um, you know, you talk to Vinicius, you talk to Francisco, it's obviously, I mean, you look in their LinkedIn, there's the background, the engineering background. That must just provide a huge level of support when you have to have these, I mean, some of this stuff gets very technical. Yesterday, I was on the LinkedIn page for a pit blast and trying to understand the, <laughs> the breakdowns of all the products. I mean, I'm just not an engineer or a blasting expert. So it was a little out of my league. So having that support, uh, what kind of advantage does that give to you when you're trying to get a product into the market? Well, a lot of times, sometimes they don't know you're, you're on site because they don't know their answer. They got a problem and they don't, they don't know that OPIT's going to solve, solve the problem. So you got to walk through them and, you know, a, a blaster might blame a driller if they're not on the same team, you know, and that's why you use OPIT dev and you can see 
how the drilling is. And then you look at <clears throat> maybe the drilling is bad because you can't get new bits or you got, you're in the iron belt and you're just drilling through really hard rock or you're out in British Columbia and you see the anticlines and the synclines and the drill just wants to follow these, uh, these bedding planes. So you kind of have to take into account the aspect of that specific mine and, and then use the technology or your experience from another spot that you were at and, and then go from, go from there. No, you got, you got some action happening behind you there. Yeah. Right. We got, <laughs> <laughs> um, so what I wanted to, to ask is um, being a company based in Portugal, you, you start off small, but then you, I mean, you've been, you've serviced a lot of countries, you're promoting everywhere. I, even I'm, I'm seeing your brand popping up a lot of different places. I mean, collaborating with a company like Whipware is, is genius because they're such a respected company. Um, what is that process? I'll let either one of you or both of you answer. What has that process been like? Um, you know, getting into the African market, the Americas, the, you know, a, across, across Europe. I mean, what's that like um, accomplishing that? Francisco, it's yours. I can, uh, I can, I can talk, but with this, you, you complete me. If I'm, if I'm not saying everything. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'd like your perspective. Yeah. It's been a while. Since okay. you I'd like your perspective of you start, you have a couple bottles of wine. You, you have this idea, you agree. And now, Years later, um, not too far later, but it's it's t days do turn into years. You've got this company that's now serving a global market. What's that experience been like for you? <laughs> uh, I think that was 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 organic. We didn't feel in that we was growing. We start to to contact with uh, several several companies in several countries, and we start to make some partners uh in any countries and and in an organic way we start to grow and the first year was very hard after one year working i think that we, we had just one or two customers in chile and was the was the beginning was the start but um we start we start to looking for Okay, we cannot concentrate efforts just in one country. Our our business model in that moment was we need to start to look for different countries, different types of companies, and we start to do that. Then um, was very important for us uh, 2017. Uh, we did a, a, a agreement <laughs> with a very important explosive companies in the Nordic countries, the, the, the player number one there. Uh, I think I cannot to say the name. I don't know if I can say the, the name of the company, but it's the most important explosive companies in the Nordic countries. And we did an agreement and we start to be the, the, the off, official software simulator of this company. And that moment it will start to grow in Europe. And of course, we start to, to try make this, this kind of um, partnership with another companies. And um, in 2019, I believe we did the same with the most important explosive companies of South America. Uh, and we start to, to supply them uh, our products. And of course, when you when when you did when we did that, we start to have a lot of customers in Chile, Peru, Brazil, um, all South America. And of course, in a organic way, we start to talk with even with another 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 distributors. Okay, even is one of the most important. But uh, we start to look for people that could be key for our business. Even is a key guy for us. Then uh, we trained him. Uh, even was here for one month. One month, even I, I, I believe yes. No, was yeah. here uh -huh. training, uh -huh. learning, sharing experience. Sometimes drinking wine. <laughs> Not a bit of a theme sometimes. here. Sometimes. <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> but uh, after th that moment even back to United States, 
And of course, now we have Canada, you have United States. This is the way that we, we, we did that. But it was organic, uh, was not so, uh, we didn't plan for the, for, for the lash, for the lash away. We planned always the, the, the short, short time uh, strategy and working. Just now we are in the moment of the company that while we are starting to plan for, not for only one year, but for five years, 10 years. But in that moment, we are planning for short time short time strategy and working and this is this is my view my view my vision about the 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 business but i'm sure that francisco could now complete my my opinion yeah i, I think uh, one thing you touched on that i've brought up on the show before uh, jack welsh one of my sort of favorite ceos um is uh he said you have to eat and you have to dream um, you got to do both. That's your job as a leader. And it, it seems like Opit Blast has sort of nailed that concept. Um, Francisco, I wanted to jump over to you to talk a little bit about that reach. Um, I mean, uh, Vinicius uh, touched on it as well. I mean, you've done, you know, Africa, Chile, now in the, the North American market, um, Latin America. So talk a little bit about that. Um, just the scale now that you're, I mean, how many countries uh, have you, have you tracked how many countries you've now uh, serviced? Uh, yeah, of course we have, we have that track. You, uh, I don't have the track for the countries that I've traveled or we've traveled, but we are, we are, we have customers in more than 30 countries all over the wow. world. Uh, we have, but I'm talking about customers, but then our presence is is uh, way bigger than 90 countries. We do a lot of partnerships with universities. That mm. that was something that uh, definitely uh, uh, helped us to to scale up. Uh, we we provided the software completely free. And if there are, there are any uh, professor from any mining institution listen to us, we provide our software completely for free for any any university all over the world. So we we have more than 90 countries uh, uh, ac accessing Opit Last. Uh, at this time, uh, and the, uh, you, were, you were asking how how we we scale up. Uh, one thing that uh, that uh, we have, we ha we are consistent and persistent. Uh, like Vinicius was saying, we spend one year uh, developing, developing, developing with no customers, but we we, ne we never look back for one second. Vinicius is a really um, powerful guy, a really skilled guy. And uh, for that time, when, when he was developing, uh, he, that was his focus. And uh, we didn't stop. He, every time we were facing issues, and we faced a lot of issues, we never looked back. And we all, our, our head was always focused on the future. And, uh, and we were extremely persistent and consistent. And uh, how we start getting those markets? We start traveling. You just book a flight. Let's go to Chile. Let's meet the customers. You know, let's meet them face to face. Uh, Africa, the same thing. Let's go to Cameroon. Let's meet the, the guys working in the in the, the biggest dam in the, in the, in Africa. Let's meet them. Let's know how they do the work. Let's let's help them. Uh, Australia, the same. United States, the same. So our, our thing was um, put back our sleeves and and work. We were not expecting the customers to to meet us. We were the ones meeting. The customers on their on their uh, site. It's very inspiring. It, both of you uh, being on the show um, and, and and talking the way you talk, it's um, it, it is inspiring because there is a lot of uh, again. I've brought it up many times in the show. If you go onto like a social media, the the way that uh, I would say entrepreneurs are motivated now is a very scary thing. It's not the roll up the sleeves. It's not bringing all these skill set. You both worked as professional engineers. You had the tools to build a company. You didn't just wake up one day and uh, decide you were going to slap something together. It's it's so important. I I think. Um, People outside of this industry should see this part of the interview. Um, we've got to talk about r and I mean, it's a huge part of your company, and we, we cannot wrap up this interview without it. Um, I will, I, I, mean, just, I think you were going to discuss this, um, but we can go back and forth between um, Francisco and yourself. New products that are on the market, where are you looking? Where, where are the products going to go? Are there any new products you can talk about that are going to be being released? Okay, um, one of uh, the most important tasks that I have is 
I cannot allow that our product start to be an old product. The idea is always create new features, new products in order to keep the product um, in a high level of uh, technology and uh, deliver for our customers uh, new technologies and efficient technologies. And for this reason, we are always, always developing, creating, researching. Um, just now, we have six or seven, seven projects in, the, in development. And now we have, um, as Francisco said, you have OPIT Blast, OPIT uh, App, Analytics, and OPIT Dev. Mm -hmm. um, but of course, our software, uh, OPIT Blast, he, uh, the market for, for our customers is just um, open pit mines and quarries. And of course, we are developing now underground solution. Uh, then we, we release, okay, this year, uh, OPIT underground, that's a new software uh, for tunneling and for um, uh, production underground blasting in order to, to, to give our course business option that they don't have today. Then we are developing underground software. We are developing a specific, specific simulator for underwater blasting. Wow. That we are working just now, okay? Um, we are working for the new version of OP Plus. Uh, OP Plus is amazing too, amazing too. It's very easy, it's, game, it's very, uh, uh, we, we have a lot of features, okay? When our customer needs some specific feature, we, we do that. Then is a, uh, but we understand that it's necessary now. Uh, Opit Bus has five years, he's a, he's a, he's a young man, and uh, we need to, 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 to make it better. And for this reason, we are creating the new version of the software, much more powerful, much more powerful, new features, new capabilities, we are not more talking about 1 million points of precision. We are talking about 10 million points. This is the level of, um, of technology that we are creating. We'll be released this year, but um, not only not only softwares. Of course, when, when I talk about new OPIT Blast or OPIT Underground, I'm talking about new apps and I'm talking about new analytics system, or new technology. But um, we are creating much more than it, okay? We are creating uh, new hardware. We are researching about the creation uh, of seismographs. Of course, we, we, uh, I'm, I'm finalizing my PhD, okay? Then uh, for this reason, I, I, I'm researching a lot of different areas. And we are trying to develop uh, seismography sensors and new versions for OPIT Dev. Okay, OPIT Dev today, uh, we are trying to, to, to add new sensors for the probe. And th this is the, the, the actual um, point of our, our company. And this year, the plan is to release three new products OPIT Blast 2, okay, OPIT Blast Underground. Okay, and we are working in a, a new tool to, 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 to integrate with a measure wide drilling system that I believe that the, will be delivered this year. And I, I think that uh, will be a great, great tool uh, for the mining industry. What about, uh, I've seen this come up, I'm starting to see it more like that. Uh, I know it's on the military side. It's it's been integrated in um, sort of that gamification of the mining operation. Is that something that your your team is looking at? The the, the gamification idea is um, when you when you try to use some older simulator or older software, you need to read a lot of manual. You need to to to, to you need to be trained to use that. Because it's not it's not easy to use, you know. When you try to use some new software, uh, a, few, a couple of months ago, I downloaded a, a, a Blast Design software simulator from my competitor, and I tried to use it, and it was not easy for me. Mm -hmm. I, how how to, to to put here some boreholes and simulate almost impossible, you know. But 
um, the idea of gamification is, do you know, when you, when you I don't know if you like uh, the, the games, but when you when you play Counter Strike, you don't need you don't need to read a manual. Mm. After install, you get your mouse, your keyboard, and you start to play, and you know how to play. When you talk about Counter Strike, World of Warcraft, because it, uh, the, the the UX and UI design team uh, they did a, 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 a very special work in order to offer for the for for the user this kind of experience that is so easy that you can start to play without a manual, without training. Then we we bring the, this idea for our products, and the idea is. After you install Opic Blast products, you don't need uh, 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 several training moments. You don't need um, read some manual. You can start to use immediately because it's very easy. Uh, it, uh, the idea is to give for our customer the, the easy experience. Then this is a gamification process. We did it in our uh, products previously. And for the new products, we have today inside the company a uh, uh, game design uh, guy working just for this. His job is how can I make it easy for the final user? Then he's working just to make the new products friendly, easy to be to be used. This is the gamification process that we we are talking about. That's amazing. Um, Francisco, uh, or, or I mean, just, whoever would like to answer this, but um, you got to build a team when you're, when you're doing something like this, you you must have so many different um, skill sets and backgrounds that are required. So, you know, I mean, if you go out, you can hire, you can hire someone um, from anywhere, but then hiring someone good, especially for an innovative sort of R and D, but the products on the market, you know, a, a company like yours is quite a complex thing to find the right fit. What are you sort of looking for when you're building a team? Uh, Francisco, uh, I'd be interested to hear your thoughts. All right. Um, our uh, hiring uh, strategy is, is really funny. Okay. We, uh, we, we, we are chasing for people that wants to be entrepreneurs and entrepreneur doesn't mean they need to open new companies. Entrepreneurs can be inside another company. We want people that think for us, people that tell us the way, uh, people that uh, show us what we should do, uh, that they, they can input uh, their, their thoughts into the process. So um, the main thing is put the, the, the developers uh, being part of the, of the development process. We, just don't, we don't tell just do this, do that. No, we tell them what they should do or we guide them, but of course they know where their works will fit. So this uh, motivates them to being part of uh, of that uh, of that process. Uh, and another thing that we also uh, always try to do with our employees, we try to invest in them. We try to to uh, to make them uh, more uh, specialized or skilled in in their their area of interest. Even if one one uh, one employee wants to move into a different area and he shows motivation to that, we, we endorse that, we, we reinforce that, that motivation and we, we support that. That is something that is really, really important. Um, and then we promote a lot of what we call endo-marketing uh, situations inside a company. We try always to, to, to bring uh, team building uh, situations uh, along the year in order to, to, to make all the employees, all, the, the, all of our colleagues, align with each other, happy with each other. And, uh, and that, uh, that helped a lot to, uh, to take the company uh, in front. Well, all I can say, gentlemen, is uh, when, and it, when the audience completely gets sick of uh, hearing my voice, I, I'll probably be looking to be part of a team. So, and I, I think I would love to be part of yours someday. <laughs> no, it's, it's amazing what you're doing. I, I really, you know, and I, I don't want to just say that and let it pass by. The, the way that your team approaches things, you know, even coming on our show and getting out there and partnering with Whipware and, you know, uh, you know, working with universities, providing your software for free, um, you know, 
making sure you're selling today, but then that, that big vision and all the R and D, I mean, that's just, it's amazing stuff. Uh, and I just, I love that you came on the show. Um, the entrepreneurial side of my mind says we have to, when you develop some of these products, we need to get you on like a, like a Thomas Palangio and one of you come on and show that collaboration. It'd be so neat. So thank you all for coming on. Um, by the way, Evan, I don't know if I mentioned it, I mentioned it off air. I'm not sure, but that unboxing video you did more companies should be doing that. So even the marketing of it, of what you're doing, the company is just fantastic. So thank you. Thank all. you so much. I, I, I love working with Francisco and Vinicius and the team at OPA. I, I don't know if I can say it enough, but you know, when you go to work, you, you want to, you want to be able to pick up the phone and then, and talk to the guys and, and enjoy that conversation and problem solve together in a positive way atmosphere you know and when it comes to the way that a lot of mining companies use blasting as an entry-level position and things like that so you go through a lot of people in our industry and you meet a lot of people and keeping that a positive work relationship and providing solutions for the customer is just it's just great it's happy you know you're you got to smile when you're getting it done and you're you're obviously a dog guy from uh, what's going on. In the That's back. right. So, <laughs> run over half the audience right there. Um, okay, last question, most important question of the day. Um, wine has come up a couple times. Uh, if if you're going to go to a, a wine store and get Portuguese wine, which which uh, which brand do you go for? I think you got to visit the guys in Porto, in Portugal. I mean, they'll, <laughs> they'll show you, they got a brand new office there right next to the football <laughs> stadium. They'll, they'll give you a fresh zinha, you know, we, they'll, they'll teach you everything you need to know. Francisco is we'll, quite happy right now. We'll take, we'll take care of the, of the wine. We you just come and then we'll take the rest. All right. Take care of the rest. <laughs> Sounds good, gentlemen. Thank you very much. Um, Thank that's you. Your company. I, I, uh, I, I hope we'll be talking again, um, both off the show, but on the show again, I think there's a lot of value there. Thank you. Thank Cheers. you for the opportunity. Okay. Um, uh, I'm not going to complicate the end, the, the ending because Gaudi is uh, recording three different people. So I will do the wrap up. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. Pit blast for setting up the show uh, with us. It was lots of fun. Oh, Gaudi, are you on? I am. Oh, okay. <laughs> Multitask much, eh? I know. <laughs> I'm just going, I could do it. Just showing do off it. now. <laughs> um, where can people like, follow, subscribe? It's again, it's one of those episodes. If you don't like the topic, I don't think you like mining. That's 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 what well, I then say. If you don't like yeah. mining, don't watch mining now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't watch mining now. It's in the name. Yeah. Where can people like, follow, subscribe? We'll have plenty of links and places you can connect with O Pit Blast. But how do people talk to us? Um, well, first of all, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. We've got two episodes a week on there. Um, we, we are trying so hard not to miss a single uh, week. So check it out. We've got not just mining now, but we've got Crownsman Energy, the Crownsman Show. Um, you can also contact us if you want to be part of the show. Again, whether it's Mining Now, Crownsman Energy, or the Crownsman Show, uh, you can email us info at crownsman.com. You can also email us if you know of someone that you think should be on the show. Um, yeah, please uh, suggest people. We're we're all we're open. I mean, you know, our agenda is not open completely. It's not next <laughs> so week. So book now. <laughs> yeah, you know, you can't jump on next week. Um, you know, another thing it's too, um, we're, and I've been having more of these talks because, well, a guest, uh, Sophie is coming on with, uh, Technica mining and they're like, they're a collaboration, you know, customer supplier, you know, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. We want to do more of that. So if you want to actually come on with your customer, you know, it's an, it's a great way to sort of promote the work you're doing, but it's really hands-on yeah. on site type of show. Very interesting idea um, that they brought to us. And so we're looking to do more of that. So yeah. keep and an eye out for that. Thank you. Every Oh, we that? will uh, tune in. We will um, soon be doing a, an episode in Portugal where we will have some wine. Some right, wine. Jeff? Yeah. Oh, boy. <laughs> I, I, I don't know if I can put words together in general and get a good applause of wine. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Thank you for watching Mining Now. Check out CIM May 3rd to 6th. Uh, Check out Mining for Miracles. Check out Opit Blast. Keep following, subscribing. Thank you for watching. See you on the next episode.